Hello and welcome to another acrylical tutorial. Before we start, please subscribe to the channel to help us make more of these tutorials. And for more downloadable files and exclusive tutorials, check out our Patreon. Link will be in the description. In this tutorial, we're going to learn a masking technique that you can use with any texture. Our texture for this project will be a circle instancing. Once we have the texture, then we will apply the masking technique. Let's press tab and create a circle sop. Right click at the output of the circle and attach a geometry. For the position of the circle instances, we're going to press tab again and create a grid sop, followed by an all sop. From here, let's open the parameter window of the geocomp, go to the instance tab and toggle on the instancing. Let's set the translate x as p0 and translate y as p1. We're not going to use the translate z position because we're only going to have two dimensions. Then let's right click on the connecting line right before the geocomp, go to insert operator and attach a transform sop. Here in the parameter window, we're going to decrease the size of the circles by decreasing the value of the uniform scale. I set this value to 0.02. To change the layout of the grid, let's go to the parameter window of the grid sop and on the x size parameter I'll set the value to 16 by 9 in order to get a horizontal layout. Then on the columns parameter we'll set the value to 20 times 16 through 9. Great, so now we have our grid of circles, let's press tab and create a constant material. Drag and drop the material onto the geo and select parameter material. Then let's press tab and we're going to create a camera comp and a render top. Open the parameter window of the camera and we'll go closer to the grid by increasing the translate Z value. Let's connect a null right at the end of the network and put it viewer active. I'll split the screen and set the second screen to top viewer. Let's right click before the null and attach an RGB key to get a black background. Great, now that we have the texture, we're going to move on to the technique. The mask we're going to create is going to have a transparent alpha background and a white foreground. Let's press tab and create a rectangle top. Connect its input to the render top. In the parameter window, go to the output tab and we're going to combine the rectangle with the input by setting the resolution only. Back to the rectangle top, let's increase the X size to around 0.9. Decrease the fill alpha all the way down to 0. Increase the border width to 0 0.9 and we'll change the border color to white. Great, now from here let's copy paste the rectangle top three times so we have four of them in total. For each of them we're going to create a transform. Then let's press tab and we're going to attach a composite top. Connect all the transforms to its input and in the parameter window let's set the operation to add. This blending mode will simply add pixel values of one layer with the other. From here let's press tab and create a bit chop followed by an all chop. The beat chop generates a variety of ramps, pulses and counters that are timed to the beats per minute. In the parameter window, increasing the number of multiplies to 4 will create 4 ramp channels. Now we want to animate each mask we created so that its size goes from 0 to its actual size. We're going to do this using the beat chop we just created. 
Let's put the bead chop viewer active and then one after the other we're going to grab the ramp and drop it onto the scale parameter of each of the transforms as a chop reference. This will give us the effect of endless masks originating somewhere in the middle, growing as they move closer to the camera and then disappearing. We notice here though that the movement of the masks at the end is a little abrupt. This is caused because the ramp only goes until 1. If we set the upper value a little higher, to around 1.5, we can get rid of this problem. So let's right click on the connecting line between the bead chop and the null, go to insert operator and insert a math chop. In the parameter window go to the range tab and in here we'll increase the range from the original one, which was 0 to 1, to the new range going from 0 to 1.5. This will make the mask transition look more seamless. The movement what we just created is our mask, so let's connect an all after the comp top and rename it to mask. Down on the grid network let's connect an all top. Then we're going to create a multiply top and connect both the mask from above and the null which is created to its input. Like so, we transform the normal rectangle masks made out of the circles with a transparent alpha. And from here we're going to subtract the masks from the image. So let's right click on the line right before the multiply, go to add operator and add a subtract top. Actually, in here we want the null from below connected to its first input and the mask to its second input. Great, now let's right click on the output of the multiply and connect a level top. In the parameter window, increase the invert parameter all the way to 1. Then let's right click on the output of the subtract and connect an overtop. By connecting the level to its second input, we'll have the bottom network over the level. And lastly, we connect the over to the rest of the network. Here we notice that we don't have a transparent background again, so we need to attach another multiply top after the level and connect the original mask to its second input. And in turn, we'll connect this to the second input of the over. And we already have the masked animation. From here, we could increase or decrease the border of the rectangles or apply deformations to the mask with a noise. Or what we could do is also use the noise to deform the original grid. To actually get the noise to work here, we have to go back to the geoparameter window where we did the instancing and also set the translate z to p2. And in order to get the grid bigger so that we don't have this empty space, we can attach a transform after the noise SOP and in the parameter window increase the uniform scale. It's up to you to get creative. You can change the entire shape of the masks and use something else rather than a rectangle and play with the parameters. To get some inspiration, you could head over to our Instagram page and see what we've created with this file. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, I hope you learned something new and we'll meet again next week with another tutorial. Until then, 
have a great time bye